Hello ladies and gentlemen, Big Daddy Top Hat here. On this channel over the past few months we have been looking at the history of various characters from the Street Fighter universe. This has included many of the boss fighters who appeared in the legendary Street Fighter 2, from M. Bison to Sagat to Vega. In today's content we are going to explore the entire career of the fourth Grandmaster from this game, Balrog. The greedy American heavyweight boxer who serves as a personal bodyguard to the terrifying M. Bison himself. So let's go back and look at how he landed such a job role and look at every single bloody appearance he has made in video games over the years. This ladies and gentlemen is the surprisingly deep story of Balrog, the baddest man in video games. Yeah. If you're old enough to remember playing Street Fighter 2 when it first came out, stumbling across a match with Balrog in the game for the first time was kind of magical, as Balrog is the first opponent you come across who was not initially a playable fighter, serving as the game's first true boss. But aside from noticing that he was a boxer who players must face off against in a location that appears to be Vegas, we were not given a great deal of information about him, so let me tell you all some more. By this point I am sure the majority of you know that a large amount of inspiration for this character was drawn from real life boxer Mike Tyson, which is made very clear from his Japanese name being M. Bison. As of 2021, the three way name swap in the west between Bison, Balrog and Vega is a fact that is regurgitated as heavily as did you know Super Mario Bros 2 is really Doki Doki Panic. The change that was made allegedly due to the fear by Capcom of them being sued by Mike Tyson himself, meaning that he now has different names in different regions with him commonly being referred to simply as a boxer at international tournaments. While his links to Mike Tyson are more than obvious, such as sharing the same hairstyle as Iron Mike around the time of the original game's release, there are characteristics to his character design that imply he is almost certainly not the same man. For example, Balrog is billed at a ludicrously tall 6 feet 6 inches, which is a complete contrast to Tyson's build height of only 5 feet 10 inches. In fact, Tyson was so short for a heavyweight that he was often nicknamed the Fire Hydrant due to being short and compact. As you can see with his towering height, Balrog certainly was no Fire Hydrant, but other inspiration for his character are rumoured. Another man who Balrog is said to be based on is former undisputed heavyweight boxing champion Leon Spinks, who would successfully defeat the legendary Muhammad Ali in 1978. With regards to Leon Spinks himself, within Japan, the home of Capcom and Street Fighter, he would be a more well-known boxer than most, as he would go on to have several matches in New Japan Pro Wrestling during the 1980s, even taking on Antonio Inoki in a submission match. Spinks was also more of a classically tall heavyweight, standing at 6 feet 1 inches, which by Japanese standards made him very tall indeed. So it would not be surprising if when Japanese game artists wanted to draw an American boxer that they would look to Leon for a dose of inspiration. Balrog in the video games, as expected, would have an arsenal of moves consisting almost entirely of arm-based attacks which makes sense considering the majority of boxers are no experts in kicking. While Balrog throws a lot of punches, he has no problem whatsoever fighting dirty when it's required, and will headbutt an opponent whenever he deems it necessary. Usually in combat, Balrog combines his skills with quick punches and raw strength to achieve victories matching the fighting style of the majority of heavyweight boxers. So now we have explored some of the concepts behind Balrog, what of his own backstory? Let's find out. It is said that Balrog had an extremely tough life growing up, living in poverty in the United States. In order to get by in life, Balrog would develop a somewhat cutthroat and ruthless nature to get by, becoming very streetwise and shall I say handy in the process. This existence would continue to toughen Balrog up, giving him the willpower to pursue boxing, becoming a prize fighter and even reaching champion status. His run on top though would be short lived as his cutthroat behaviour would scarp his career as a result of him losing his temper in matches and headbutting an opponent. In fact, through his boxing career he would permanently injure several opponents and even accidentally end up killing one. 
Balrog would quickly become a magnet for controversy due to his self-centred attitude, hot temper and arrogance. His insatiable appetite for money and desire to bully others would mean that this sadistic individual would often refuse to take responsibility for his negative actions. Despite all these issues plaguing Balrog's life, he would still experience and enjoy great fame, especially in Las Vegas, where he would end up residing. Although all this love and admiration from fans was meaningless to him, as all he really cared about was money, which of course his fights would generate him. Living a lifestyle of the rich and famous in Vegas would be how Balrog would end up running into the criminal organisation known as Shadowloo, jumping at the chance to become M. Bison's chief enforcer, the moment a ludicrous financial offer was placed on the table. Money is all Balrog truly cares about. As discussed earlier, Balrog would make his video game debut as M. Bison's enforcer within Street Fighter 2 and as one of the game's final opponents in M. Bison's World Warrior Tournament, a competition that M. Bison was hosting to lure Ryu out of hiding. While in the game, essentially acting as a stepping stone before players get to Bison himself, it is said that after M. Bison is taken out of commission in the title, that Balrog would end up being left in charge of Shadowloo. However, he would run the organisation into the ground in no time at all, leading to him returning to the streets and picking up menial security jobs in Vegas casinos. If players happen to win the World Warrior Tournament as Balrog though, the game just shows him enjoying his wealth. This however is obviously not canon to the main Street Fighter story. After the huge success of Street Fighter 2 and its iterations, we would of course get the live action movie. In this 1994 flick, Balrog would be portrayed by Grandel Bush, but repositioned in the film as one of the good guys. Balrog is a cameraman in Chun Li's news crew and holds a deep grudge against Shadowloo for ruining his boxing career. Spurring from this movie, he would obviously appear in the video games that coincided with this feature length. Years later, he would show up in another live action movie, Street Fighter for The Legend of Chun Li, this time correctly portrayed as one of Bison's main enforcers alongside Vega which is more accurate to the Street Fighter canon, unlike most of the rest of this abysmal film. Balrog would also feature in the 1994 Japanese animated movie where he would accurately be positioned as Bison's muscle. He first appears in the movie witnessing the fight between Blanca and Zangief, which we have covered on here before, and at the end of the movie he accompanies M. Bison to Thailand for the movie's final showdown. Here he fights E. Honda, even utilising his trademark headbutt in the encounter. To send the crowd home happy, E Honda ultimately wins at this bout. In the Japanese animated series Street Fighter 2 V, Balrog infiltrates Interpol while working for Shadowloo. Here he tricks Kami, who has no relation to Shadowloo in this canon, into trying to assassinate Chun Li's father, who Balrog tells her is a drug lord. Ultimately, this eventually leads to a fight between Kami and Balrog, with Kami winning and handing over Balrog to the authorities. When it comes to this sort of media, Balrog would also be in the 1995 American Street Fighter cartoon, but hilariously, he is not just a boxer who works for M. Bison, but also an educated scientist who programs all of Shadowloo's computers. In the series, he tries to spread fake news about the heroes by creating a fake video of them defiling a Hindu temple in India. I am not really sure what they were smoking when producing this show, but it's creative and far removed from the games to say the least. In the world of gaming, the Street Fighter Alpha series of games would arrive, the story prequels to that of Street Fighter 2. Balrog himself would not surface in these titles until the third instalment, Street Fighter Alpha 3, with the game shedding a little more light on Balrog's life. In the game, Balrog has already joined M. Bison at Shadowloo, and while running errands for the Darsa Lee villain, kills poor Dao Sim's elephant with just one single Gigaton punch. Part of his mission in the game is to locate and terminate Birdie, a character who had previously appeared in the original Street Fighter game from back in 1987. It is revealed that Birdie was originally a Shadloo ally, but Balrog was sent to assassinate him after it was learned that Birdie planned to try and overthrow Bison. When catching up to him, Birdie informs Balrog of M. Bison's Psycho Drive, with Balrog even making a deal with Birdie to help him find it, considering it to be worth a lot of money. The Psycho Drive ultimately ends up being destroyed though, and with Balrog realising he's still waiting for a payday from Bison, he quietly transitions back into his usual line of Shadowloo work. Anyway, Alpha 3 further highlights that Balrog's only true motivation is money, and he begrudgingly follows M. Bison's orders simply to get paid. 
Moving through history, while Balrog would miss out on being made a playable fighter in Street Fighter 3, the furthest point in the Street Fighter timeline, he would be acknowledged as part of this story within The Secret Files, a series of booklets published by Capcom giving him more information on various games. In the booklet about Street Fighter 3, the new generation, it was revealed that Balrog competed in a prize fighting competition just prior to the events of the game, and defeated many opponents along the way. In the finals of this competition, he would be defeated by Alex, the Lex Luger of the Street Fighter franchise, who Capcom would unsuccessfully try to position as the franchise's new mascot. So that went well. Balrog would also appear in some crossover games around this time frame, firstly popping up in a hilarious cameo in X-Men vs Street Fighter, with the boxer appearing in Magneto's ending illustrating that Street Fighter 2's Grand Masters switch sides to fight for Magneto instead. Which I must say is very progressive of Magneto, considering he usually hates humans and only wants to associate with fellow mutants. Balrog would also appear in various Capcom vs SNK crossover games, including being redrawn as an SNK King of Fighters style sprite for SVC Chaos, which I must say was pretty damn cool to see. In the Street Fighter 4 games that occur chronologically after the events of Street Fighter 2, M. Bison makes a return through the construction of a new body. He instantly re-recruits Balrog to his organisation a job the boxer gladly accepts after spending a period doing no more than low paid security work. Balrog is ordered by Bison to guard multiple replacement bodies he has had constructed, with Balrog perceiving they are worth a lot of money, and so concocts how he could potentially steal them, putting him on what he calls Easy Street Forever. In his ending, while looking for treasure after the fall of Seth, along with the Sin Laboratory, he stumbles across a small boy asking for his help. Showing no interest to help the boy at first, Balrog changes his mind after noticing a glowing Shadaloo insignia on the boy, so rescues him with the hope he will be useful to him later down the line. This event feeds into the story of the next game in the series, Street Fighter V, which sheds even further light on Balrog's existence, giving us arguably his most involved part in a Street Fighter game story thus far. In Street Fighter V, Bison's new enforcer replacing Sagat, known as Fang, is impressed that Balrog managed to find the boy from Sin's laboratory but informs him that now Operation Change is in full swing, that his actions can be seen as a betrayal. The two end up getting into a fight with Balrog winning. Afterwards, the boy comes out revealing that his name is Ed. In between the events of Street Fighter 4 and 5, it appears that Balrog raised Ed, taking on a sort of paternal role for the boy, who was created as another backup body for M. Bison. Ed is now a cocky and flash young man. In Balrog's individual character story, it shows Ed and Balrog meeting up with Urien in China, where Balrog defeats Nakali, leading to Urien rewarding him with money and promising to pay him even more if he can deliver data for Operation James. Urien ties greatly into the backstory of Street Fighter 3, but that's a video for another time. In A Shadow Falls, the big Street Fighter 5 story angle, Ed helps Balrog take a control key from Zangi that helps control Bison's super weapon but it is later re-stolen back from them. After Bison is defeated by Ryu at the end of Shadow Falls, Ed and Balrog are seen walking away together. After these events in Ed's prologue named the Nimble Boxer, it highlights Ed and Balrog's relationship further. After Bison's defeat, the two take refuge under a waterfall in New Zealand, where the spirit of M. Bison tries to possess Ed's body. Ed is successful in preventing this during his sleep, and is woken up by Balrog. Ed informs Balrog that he no longer wants to stay with him in fear of Balrog eventually getting hurt. Balrog tells him to just shut up and follow his orders, leading to an emotional fight breaking out between the two of them. Ed manages to defeat Balrog in this encounter, leading to the heavyweight boxer's most uncharacteristic moment in the Street Fighter story as of yet. Ed's departure not only results in Balrog expressing sadness of being left by the boy he raised like a son, but his anger and aggression is also replaced with him emotionally shouting at Ed to get lost, illustrating to gamers that maybe there has always been more layers to Balrog than simply a man who was just existing to make as much money as possible. As discussed in my Vega video, Vega and Balrog would team begrudgingly with one another in Street Fighter Cross Tekken in order to gain Pandora's box, which takes control of both of them in the game's ending. 
Balrog would also be a boss fighter in Street Fighter Cross Mega Man, and would even be the focus of a short film known as Balrog Behind the Glory. Still though, after visiting most of Balrog's major appearances in video games today, it has become clear that there is a lot more to this character than what first meets the eye, and his relationship with the boy he raised, named Ed, puts forward a case that this prize fighter's personality is a lot more layered than he makes others aware of on the surface. While Balrog is most certainly remembered for being Bison's enforcer and a greedy, ruthless, money-hungry boxer, his relationship with Ed is proof that deep down that this cold villain does really have a heart, even if he does not choose to show it very often. So I guess, ladies and gentlemen, that was the surprisingly deep story of Balrog, one of the four grandmasters who would become famous as of Street Fighter 2. Let me know in the comment section which Street Fighter character you would be keen for me to cover next. I would love to hear your thoughts. Speaking of character retrospectives, on this Thursday Just Gone, I went back and took a look at every single game that has ever been made that featured Metal Sonic. And bearing in mind how ridiculously low the views have been on that one, it would not surprise me if most of you did not even know that such content exists. So why not check it out if you fancy a change of pace from my usual work? If you want to talk gaming, please consider following me on Twitch, where you can ask me any questions you want about my content every Tuesday and Saturday night. And if you are feeling generous, please consider supporting my hard work over on Patreon, where I try to deliver early access and other incentives on every video. Speaking of patrons, thank yous go out to Sebastian Velez, Murder of Crows, Carl Johnson, Heyo Paula Lopez, Nostalgia Collector, Ben Haradine, Corey I. Marsh Senior, Capcom vs SNK, BXL Gotham, Ron Dinched, Evan Border, Philip Manth, Kazal Rakai, Keith Ferguson, Dropkin Varela, McCulloch, Ego, Jordan Duran, Age of Light 85, Ian Boyle, Nick Daniels, Princess Zana, Daniel Daly, Computer Man, House of a Ted, Gary Pinkett, ECU Professor, Kid Anime, Justin Wang, Alan McNamara, Hermes Gonzalez, Instant Gratification Monkey, Man Shovel, James Bishop, JB, Michael Hall, Wesley Sang He, Valacio, Langston Miller, Noob, Brian Barry, Sarah Powell, Vlay McRene, Marino Liga, Chris Corti, OG Driver, Adrian Hannington, Bernard NG, Richard Stu Stewart, Dan Van Dammit, Louis Viant, John Bates, David Bow, Chris Fisk, Mike Bruno, Rick67, Antonio Rodriguez, Craig Jenkins, Retroverse.com, Casey Wright, Synth Spaces, and Zai. Thank you all so much for following my content, and I'd also like to give some extra thanks, because I forgot, Andrew Bozanski, Alex Summers, Gunther Hendricks. Thank you all of you. Thank you so much. Yeah, cheerio.